Hey guys, so this is a quick reaction video on what happened to Hygin so that you guys don't panic, at least you see it from the numbers. So I'll be reading an article, basing it from an article and just analyzing it from there. So check this video out. Before we begin this Talks by Request session, I'd like to invite you also for those that want to learn over a classroom setting. I have Stock Smart sessions below for our sessions in Qatar, Manila, Cebu, Iloilo, Hong Kong, uh, CTO, and uh, Taiwan. I'll also be having collaborations with Randall Chongson. I'll be in Japan this April 13th, uh, particularly in the Tokyo and Kawasaki area. So we will be doing investing insights 2019 there if you are from that area i'll put the link below on how you can join us and how you can uh, be part of that session and also this february 13 i'll be doing make money grow money with sean c uh sean c is the ceo of seo a hacker he became a multi-millionaire in his early 20s he became a ceo at 22 i'm having this event with him in smx aura Hey guys, so this is a reaction video on what happened to uh, of, to Hygin. So let me give you a background and I'll try to read snippets of uh, what the news article really is. So basically, this is the largest default in uh, corporate history. You know, for those who want to know what happens, is normally companies issue bonds. Bonds are basically debt that they need to repay. So a lot of people say that bonds are low risk especially if the company has the ability to pay it now this is the flip scenario that the company defaulted meaning they will not pay their obligations already now it puts a jeopardy on those who invested meaning institutions and retailers who place their money in those banks and those banks uh, were the ones who purchased the bond so there's also now a possibility that those who invested and made and placed money with the hope and the intention that their capital will be returned after the bond period plus the interest that would have been incurred from that it's now in jeopardy that it could not it would not be paid for so the total default was around 412 million us dollars which is something very 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 uh very very big and i've mentioned this in previous videos that uh five banks have exposure to it the largest uh, bank that has uh, exposure is RCBC. Among the other banks, you have Land Bank, but uh, MBP, uh, Metro Bank, uh, PPI, and BDO. So uh, the big three is pretty much exposed. Uh, UBP, Security Bank, uh, East West Bank. Based on this article that I'm reading, they're pretty much uh, safe as of this point of time. So, so that what's the next plan? The next goal of uh, all of these banks? So because there is because the company has assets, their next play now is to uh, get the assets of the bank. But of course, you have to remember this: before debts are paid, they they still need to pay uh, creditors, and suppliers, because they're the first ones that should get paid first. And based on what they're saying, it won't be a hostile takeover that they will try to get assets. The main goal that they will try to do is this: they will try to have the business and the property and the assets sold and what they're saying is uh, the property and the business alone which is in Subic it's hygiene heavy industries and construction Philippines is worth 1.6 uh, billion US dollars so it's still massively bigger than the default again uh, the default is around 412 million US dollars the assets of the business is 1.6 billion US dollars which it needs to be sold because uh, if they stop the business, the problem there is there's around 23,000 employees working for them. And that's that's not good. No one wants people to lose uh, jobs as well. So what we want, the goal is they sell it, someone buys it, once it gets bought, the banks get paid. And it's more than enough also for the debt. And uh, based, on, based on the article, uh, this happened before uh, when Asian financial crisis got hit. So they're pretty much confident that uh, they'll be able to uh, somehow somehow have this paid. In terms of exposure, RCBC had around 140 million uh, in terms of exposure in terms of the debts. 
Then you have land bank at 80 million, metro bank at 72, PPI and PDO are both at 60 million uh, pesos each. So uh, I, I don't know how fast this will this will be, no, and how how they will be able to recoup this quickly. This could possibly also be tied up uh, for a longer duration of time, but a speedy recovery of this uh, will be healthy uh, in terms of confidence in the banking industry here and in confidence in, in terms of the economy as a whole. So I'm, I'm pretty much hoping that it happens. And this also shows that uh, even if you are invested in bonds, it's always not a guaranteed thing. Things like this can happen that uh, the, the one who borrowed the money because their business is not doing so well, they won't have a chance or they won't be able or they, don't have the, they won't have the ability to pay it back. So that's why it goes always to the notion that if you are investing, regardless if it's stocks, cryptocurrencies, forex, real estate, and in this case, bonds, you need to put an amount of money that if it goes to zero, if it defaults, or if you don't get it, get anything from it, you're supposed to be okay. And and that's what I want to reiterate to all of you. If you're if you're just focusing on and you're not looking at what if something bad happens, what if hindi ako bayaran, that's where you have a problem. Don't always focus on how much you can earn. Always focus on also that if what are the risks involved, what are the things that will happen if it doesn't go my way and am I can I sleep well at night if it doesn't go in that direction? So for hygiene, default, at, as of this point in time, it's not so good for the banks. But they really need to, it, they have to sell so that they recoup everything. And I'll keep you posted over the next few weeks and months on how this will go. But if you've noticed the stocks, uh, particularly RCBC and also BDO, MBT, uh, BBI, they've pretty much been also battered down, but RCBC has been battered the most, uh, pretty much because of uh, this news item. And uh, of course, it will take a, it, it will take a hit in terms of uh, what their balance sheet will be uh, for the year. And a speedy resolution for this will make it uh, better, especially for holders of the stock. So I guess that's it. Uh, it always goes back to risk management. It always goes back to how you allocate your portfolio. It also always will go back that I've been reading reports that it wasn't really a sound company to begin with. That uh, that's why, if, uh, full disclosure, I invest in bonds also. Uh, aside from aside from uh, government bonds, I have corporate bonds. But most of the co corporate bonds that I own are mostly listed companies because at least. I know from an FS perspective, from a financial perspective, uh, I know what I know the direction of these companies, and I know if they're actually good or not, and I know if they have the capacity to pay me or not, and that's the advantage of buying listed companies. At least you have a firmer notion, or you have a framework that, hey, because they're listed, and I'm actually investing in stocks of those companies, stocks have a greater risk, bonds to have a lesser degree of risk in it. So I guess that's it. Uh, I hope this video helps you, uh, gives you a notion that since there's risk in any investment out there, you have to position yourself in, stock, in stocks or bonds that you know and you can tolerate. So that's it for now. Marvin Germo. I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys. Bye-bye.